Hello, how are you Chanel and your pumpkin? So I would like to say thank you very much for inviting me to speak to you on your network. Um, I'm definitely a fan. I've been watching over the past few nights and I really enjoy your positive message that you are communicating to your fans and your friends and your family. Um, let's go to your questions. Okay, let's see. First question. Okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Tona Brown. I'm a violinist and vocalist um, from Springfield, Virginia. I am originally from Norfolk, Virginia, and I went to the Governor's School for the Arts. Um, and at the age of 14, I knew that I wanted to be a concert artist. I knew that I wanted to be a violinist. I knew I wanted to perform around the world. And I wanted to do everything I could to make that happen. And so I guess that's why you see the things that I have been doing um, now. Um, all stems from a dream of a little 14 year old child. So I'm very, very blessed in that regard. Um, let's see, I went to Shenandoah Conservatory of Music for college. I've done workshops at the Juilliard School of Music as well as Eastman School of Music, um, Old Dominion, Norfolk State University, the list goes on. Um, I do a lot of speaking, um, public speaking, motivational speaking around the country. Um, just basically trying to communicate to people that one, transgender people are just like everyone else. And two, you have to believe that you can do better in order to do better. You, that's the first part of it all is that you believe and communicate it to someone else and you will achieve where you're trying to go but you have to believe first so I'm, I'm a big per, um, big advocate for um, thinking outside of the box and doing um, great things and dreaming bigger and bigger and bigger bigger so that is primarily what I do um, I tour around and perform. I also contract musicians to various events, um, weddings, funerals, dinner parties, corporate functions, you name it. If there's something that they need a violinist or a vocalist or you know a cellist or a string quartet for, I get in the mix, hook it up, and that's what I do. I also teach um, I teach private instrumental and vocal lessons, primarily violin and voice, um, to all people of all ages. So um, I'm very, very fortunate in that regard to be able to support myself from my music. It's not like a hobby, you know, people will say, you know, is this what you do? And I'm like, yes, this is what I do 24 seven. Um, I even give lessons to some students via Skype. Um, that I've been working with ever since they were in high school. Um, I just taught a girl um, last night, actually, who I've been working with ever since she was like 16 years old. So I, I love what I do. I love to perform and I love to teach. So um, feel free if you're interested in lessons, let me know. Um, let's see, what else did you ask? Okay, what age did I know I was transgendered? Well, first of all, I transitioned at the age of 23 and I knew far earlier, but I didn't know that it was possible to transition because I wasn't around anyone else that was transgendered. And um, I, my family kind of kept me, kept me um, busy in different things. So I was constantly practicing four to eight hours a day and I just never really was around anyone else that was like me. So at first I went through the whole, you know, I'm gay, um, trying to figure that whole thing out, but I just wasn't happy. And after I went to college, that's when it started to make more sense. Like all my friends were like, look, you know, look at this. You know, I start looking at different things and start doing research and realize this is who I was. Um, and so I transitioned um, with, the watchful eye of a couple friends who I moved to DC and I lived with a girl over the summer and I fully transitioned and almost immediately started speaking about the subject um, and, and I have funny stories about that it was so funny because I really didn't know what I was getting into but 
it is what it is. So that is when I trans transitioned. Um, how did your family handle your transition? This is an excellent question. My mother actually knew about it and asked me. Um, she asked me, you know, do you feel that you're a transsexual? <laughs> and so um, I said, yes, I do. And um, we had a long conversation and she said, okay. And that was it. Um, my family was okay. I have one brother who had some issues and he's um, recently over the past few years has let it go. Um, but he's the only one that really had issues. My other brothers are fine. My family is fine. Um, so I didn't really have people telling me that there, that I was going to have any issues being around them. And if I did think that that was a, a possible issue, then I just wouldn't deal with them. It's, it's not worth it. You know, I'm going to be who I am and they're going to be who they are and they're going to have their opinion. I'm from the deep South. You know, my family's from Norfolk, Virginia, down through North Carolina, South Carolina, you know, all the way through Florida, some people in New York, you know, all over the place. So it wasn't worth it to me to fight with them. If that's what you believe, that's what you believe. But I, I know who I am. And so that was it. Um, okay. I had the great fortune of performing for Barack Obama at the LGBT Leadership Conference in, I think it was May, June. It was in June of last year, June 23rd, I believe, um, at the Sheraton, New York City. Um, it was life-changing, to say the least, because I never wanted a performance so much. Um, I volunteered, of course, and I said, if, if he's going to come and speak for anything that's LGBT, I must be there. And so I got the contact information to the person to talk to, and through the help of others from the Out Music Foundation and um, speaking with them, you know, they made it happen. You know, I got to meet this great president. I was able to talk to him and take pictures and sing the national anthem and um you know i still get chills thinking about it it was just amazing and what was even more funny was i actually wasn't nervous <laughs> wasn't nervous at all i just i had this very calm energy over me because i knew this was what i was meant to do and it was the validation that i'm constantly talking to everyone else about that you know i just felt that here's proof that no matter who you identify as you can still make something great out of yourself and um that's what it did you know I, uh, i'll never forget it it was amazing um let's see what else did you ask okay the five biggest problems well i actually have three that come to mind um one unity we as um, a trans people need more unity in general in general you have black transsexuals against white transsexuals you have trans separatists who don't want to be associated with those of us that say look this is who we are this is our journey this is where we came from so you have a lot of that and when it comes down to legislation if there's not enough unity you have nothing so that's the first thing. The second thing is we need to take more responsibility for some of the things that we have done and some of the images that we put out there that represent our entire community. Um, you know, we get really upset when we hear people say the T word and this, this, but then you have some of us who readily accept the term. Um, you know, just a lot of back and forth with that. So that's something that we definitely need to work on. Um, the fighting amongst each other and, you know, um, it, it's really ridiculous. So it's, it's something that I don't really get involved in uh, and I ignore when I see it. Um, but I know for myself, I've reached out to a lot of the girls um, just to befriend them or I would see them around and, you know, it's a lot of really shady 
people out there. So it is what it is. Um, let's see. The third thing is the media's look at us um, or how they want to portray us. The media has a tendency to portray us as freaks of nature, as people who are downtrodden and or they have we have horrible lives and you know all they want to showcase are the woe is me stories they don't want to showcase the stories of triumph um, my personal dilemma with that was even performing for Barack Obama simply because the gay media wanted me to sign exclusivity to them um, in order to report the story but they would not promise to give me a feature article in the written publication um, and this was a, a huge um, if I mentioned the name of that magazine and um, you all would know who it was and so I refused to do it because I will never sell myself short or my community so I said you know what God will bless me to be able to spread this message and to let people know in its own time and so that's another reason why I'm so glad to be able to do videos like this um, because again we need to report on the triumphs of each other and that's very very important because if we don't do it who's gonna do it no one else is gonna do it for us you know we um, a lot of mainstream media does, don't even really think we're important and thankfully with the progression of trans sisters like Isis King and you know, gentlemen like Chaz and you know, Chaz Bono and just others just getting themselves out there. Laverne Cox, um, all people that I definitely admire for just being themselves and, and, and letting their authenticity just shine. Um, that is changing. So those would be the three biggest things that I feel are issues that we need to overcome. Some of my accomplishments and future goals. Well, to be the first transgender to perform for a sitting president is an amazing accomplishment, um, one that I will cherish for my entire life. Um, being able to support myself off of my music is an, is an extreme accomplishment, especially for someone who's a classical artist. Um, I'm very, very blessed to be able to do so. To be the first trans person to perform for the Out Music Awards, especially the first classical music transgender person, you know, there was never any classical music involved in a lot of these award ceremonies, so that was an accomplishment. I've had so many, to be honest. Um, I've been very, very blessed, and I'm very grateful for every last one, um, you know. But those are ones that really, really stick out to me. Um, and I think for all of the youth out there that happen to be of trans experience, there's so many firsts that are yet to happen. You know, there has never been a greater time for you to be yourself authentically and to be out as yourself. So I encourage so many more to do it because um, all I had was advice from artists, people, my family, you know, don't say anything until you get big. Like, why tell people that you're transgender? Just do you, you know, just perform and, you know, be stealth. And I didn't want to do that anymore. And when I was offered the op when I was offered opportunity by the Gay and Lesbian Association Against Defamation, GLAD, to tell my story on a national level. Um, and it was covered in Advocate Magazine, Virginia Pilot, and a number of others. Um, I did it. You know, I lost a um, church job from it but that was about it <laughs> so it is what it is let's see next question who inspires you and who are some of your role models I have so many role models because I love to read documentaries and my role models are people who think outside the box um, or people who have succeeded beyond anyone's imagination um, like Oprah Winfrey who was a huge role model of mine um, Marian Anderson who opened the doors for African American classical singers um, Shirley Verrett who I was very very fortunate enough to have met and interviewed 
um, for the St. Louis American newspaper, um, Grace Bumry, um, Aunt Sophie Mutter. Uh, my mother, of course, was a huge role model to me. I had an Aunt Edna who was a huge role model because she's the one who in um, introduced so much culture into my everyday life. Um, I start off in dance, which a lot of people don't know. I was a dancer. I took ballet, tap, and jazz. And um, everyone thought that I was going to be a dancer for years. Um, my family was shocked when I told them that I wanted to sing and that I wanted to play violin. Um, but performing arts is, is something that's very natural to my family. You know, a lot of uh, my family members did very well in the performing arts. So I have to say, those are some of my biggest role models um, that just come to me off the top. I have so many. Um, I could do this video over and over and give you 10 more people. You know, of course, Martin Luther King and, um, and others. But anyone who thinks outside of the box intrigues me. So those would be my role models. I see. Okay. Well, I want to thank you very, very much for the opportunity to speak to you and to speak to everyone that follows your page. And just to say, you know, treat others the way you would like to be treated. You know, live your life to the fullest and believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. Um, I love the fact that Chanel is telling the world that we should be more positive because that is what I tell people who follow me on my vlog as well. I'm introducing a new website on tonabrown.com that is currently in construction, but I would love for you all to follow. Um, and again, I'm on Twitter at Tenacity or Tona City, T-O-N-A-C-I-T-Y. Um, and I look forward to speaking to many of you and and hearing about all the positive things that are happening in your life because you can do anything as long as you believe and if you believe you shall receive so thank you all so very much um, for giving me the opportunity to speak to you and I look forward to um, communicating with you again thank you bye